Hi there, and welcome to Learn to Code with Ruby. My name is Boris Passcaver, and I'm a software engineer, online educator, author, and consultant based in New York City. I'm super excited to introduce you to the powerful Ruby programming language. So first up, what is Ruby? Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. And although this may be your first experience with a programming language, as I'm sure you know from popular culture, we use a programming language to give a computer instructions to execute. Programming languages allow us to automate operations by telling the computer how to perform those operations for us. Now, in regards to the term object-oriented, I realize it may be your first time hearing this, and we'll talk more about what that word means technically, but for now, you can think of object-oriented as the category or the classification of language that Ruby falls under. There's many times different types of something, right? There is, for example, cars, and there's different types of cars. Same idea here, there are different types of languages that operate differently, and Ruby falls under the classification of being object-oriented. So Ruby was first developed and released in 1995 by Yukihiro Matsumoto, who goes by the nickname Mats in the community. So the language is almost 30 years old. And today it can be set up on all modern operating systems, including Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And while these systems and how they implement Ruby may be different under the hood, the actual core mechanics of the language, the syntax we write, which means the symbols and the characters that we write, remains the same regardless of what operating system you are going to be working on. All right, so why learn Ruby and especially why learn Ruby as your first language? Well, Ruby is focused on programmer productivity and simplicity, which means its syntax is much simpler than that of other languages. Now, the first time you hear this, you might say, well, that's kind of silly. Shouldn't every language be focused on programmer productivity and simplicity and happiness? And the answer is not really. Going back to the car analogy, some cars are built for speed, other cars are built for safety, other cars are just built for show. Same idea goes with programming languages. Some programming languages are built to be super fast. Some programming languages are built to be prone to error. It's very important that the program they are running not fail, right? Because it may be mission critical. Maybe you're, for example, writing code for a space station, right? Uh, that is going to be monitoring the earth, right? Uh, Ruby and its design principles focus on developer happiness, which means code that is simple, that is elegant, that doesn't require as many characters to write compared to other languages, all of which creates that feeling of programmer happiness. Ruby is a joy to write and to look at because it is very elegant. And many times it even reads like human language. You're going to be surprised when in a few moments I show you a sample of Ruby code and it's going to read very much like a broken English sentence, right? So the drawback of this focus on programmer happiness is slower speed relative to other languages. I want to clarify that Ruby is not necessarily slow as a language, it's just slower than other languages, specifically compiled languages like Java and C++. So if you're building something like a financial trading application where every single millisecond is valuable, Ruby is probably not your best bet. But, but for just about everything else, Ruby is phenomenal. And as I mentioned, you can build your program while enjoying the code you write because it's going to be much simpler, much more elegant, and much less verbose. So here's that example I wanted to tell you about. On the right-hand side there, I have a valid sample of Ruby code. So if I were to copy and paste this into a code editor and run the file, this would work. This would be a valid Ruby program. So if we ignore the curly braces and the double quotes and all those weird symbols, and we simply read this from left to right, it reads five times print hello there. So what do you think this code does? It accomplishes this result. It prints the text hello there five times to the screen. In other words, five times it prints hello there, which is exactly what that original code sample reads like, right? It is a little bit of broken English, you could say. It's not the same as reading regular English, but believe me when I say that this kind of code in another language might take 10 lines, 15 lines of code to accomplish with a lot more complexity and a lot more weird symbols and declarations that you might be unfamiliar with. So as far as ultimate simplicity, this is an example of just why Ruby is so acclaimed and beloved because it can accomplish code like this that reads almost like English. And don't worry, you don't have to memorize this code right now. We're gonna go into the details of what all these symbols are later and how to write them. This is just to demonstrate 
what Ruby's design principles are and why people love working with this language. All right, to close this lesson off, I want to quickly talk about Ruby on Rails. The first thing to note is that Ruby and Ruby on Rails are different technologies. They are not the same thing, even though Ruby on Rails has Ruby in its name. Ruby on Rails, also shortened to Rails, is a popular web development framework built on top of Ruby. So Ruby is the underlying language or the foundation on top of which Rails is built. And if you're curious about web development and what that means, that is basically building the business logic of a website. So for example, Ruby on Rails has been used to build Twitter, Airbnb, Shopify, and GitHub. And Ruby on Rails creates all of the business models that those sites need so that whenever you visit a page from those websites on the internet, the uh, backend, as we call it, which is the business logic of the website, is running on Ruby on Rails. So uh, Rails was developed by David Heinemeyer Hansen, DHH, while working at Basecamp, and then it was released as an open source project about 15 or so years ago. The reason I bring this up is because Ruby on Rails is usually the primary reason why people want to learn a Ruby. Ruby is the underlying language, so it is a foundation or a prerequisite for Rails, and Rails remains a really popular tool, not just in those enterprise companies that I listed, but also in startups because it follows the same design principles as Ruby, and those are being easy to work with, being elegant, with code that is quick to write, and pleasing for the developer to observe. And so it's applying Ruby, but in a specific business domain, in a specific endeavor, and that is web development. So if you are curious about learning Ruby on Rails, that is great, but you need to learn the foundation first, which is Ruby, and that is what this course will be focused on, all right? That's all there is to cover in this introductory lesson. Earlier on, I mentioned the term object-oriented. So in the next lesson, I want to do a quick discussion on what that term exactly means by doing a really fun real-world exercise. And then after all that is done, we can, of course, get the, to the actual installation of Ruby on our computers. So I look forward to a really fun course. Ruby remains a phenomenal first language to learn, a great language to know in general. It was one of the first languages that I learned. It was actually the language that I learned when I went to coding bootcamp a couple years ago. And also my first job in the world was a Ruby on Rails based site. So I have a strong affinity for this language. I love working with it. I think it's perhaps the most elegant, most beautiful language that I've worked with. And I'm really excited to pass the torch on as the expression goes to a new generation of learners. I'm really uh, excited to hopefully capture the joy of working with this language and pass it on to you. Especially if this is your first time learning how to program, I really think this is a wonderful entry point and I look forward to having an incredible course together. So with that, I will see you in the next lesson and best of luck.